Hello and welcome back to our channel. In this video, we are going to the beautiful Royal Borough of Greenwich. With a scenic riverside setting, Greenwich is famous for its naval and military connections and green spaces. The Royal Greenwich Observatory, home to the Prime Meridian, the National Maritime Museum and the Old Royal Naval College, are found in Greenwich Park, which is also known as Maritime Greenwich. This area was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1997. So, let's explore Maritime Greenwich with us, and if you stay until the end of the video, you could also join us for a cable car ride to glide above the Thames and take in aerial views of London's skyline. Just behind the Queen's House and the National Maritime Museum, you could see the Royal Observatory in the distance on top of the hill. Observatory Hill, located right next to the Royal Observatory, is the most popular viewpoint in Greenwich Park. If you walk from the National Maritime Museum and climb up the steep slope towards the Royal Observatory, you'll be rewarded with a fantastic vista of the city. From here, you can look down on the Queen's House, the National Maritime Museum, the Royal Naval College and the high-rise buildings of Isle of Dogs on the other side of the river. Until its closure in 1998, Royal Greenwich Observatory was the oldest scientific research institution in Great Britain. It was commissioned in 1675 by King Charles II and is the home of Greenwich Mean Time, the prime meridian of the world and London's planetarium. A meridian is an imaginary line, last established in 1851, selected as the zero reference line for astronomical observations. Every place on Earth was measured in terms of its distance east or west from this line. The line itself divided the eastern and western hemispheres of the Earth. At the gates to the observatory, you can see the Shepherd Gate clock, which was the first clock ever to show Greenwich Mean Time directly to the public. At our next stop, the National Maritime Museum, you could see the temporary outdoor art exhibition named The World Reimagined, where a display of 36 globes, each adorned with a unique artwork, is trying to transform how we understand the transatlantic slave trade and its impact on all of us. If it is naval history you are interested in, then there's plenty to see at the Maritime Museum. For example, there are over 230 figureheads in the collection with a wide range of creatures and styles available. Figureheads are carved wooden sculptures that traditionally sat on the prows of sailing ships. The Maritime World of Asia Gallery looks at the traders and trade of the East India Company that shaped trade between Britain and Asia for over 250 years. Featured in the gallery are some of the people who were involved in exploration and trade, such as Vasco de Gama, a Portuguese explorer and the first European to reach India by sea. There are others, such as Captain Robert Knox of the British East India Company. He spent almost 20 years in Ceylon as a captive after he suffered the loss of ship in a storm along the Coromandel coast and bay of Bengal. Amongst other things, the gallery features commodities the East India Company brought back to Britain such as exciting new spices from Asia.
The Atlantic Worlds Gallery looks at the complexity of the histories linking Africa, the Americas and Europe. Enslaved Africans were forcibly transported across the Atlantic to toil as unfree labour on plantations that produced sugar, tobacco and cotton for the Europeans. In the Pacific Encounters Gallery, you could see a real Fijian canoe known as Drua and learn more about encounters between Europeans and the people of the Pacific Ocean. There is much more to see than we have shown in the video, including the Polar Worlds Gallery showcasing relics and artefacts from historic polar expeditions and Sea Things Gallery with ship models and ship badges. Also, don't forget to visit the Nelson's Gallery to get up close to the actual uniform Admiral Nelson was wearing when he was fatally wounded at the Battle of Trafalgar. Right opposite the museum is the Old Royal Naval College, a UNESCO World Heritage Site with 600 years of rich history. Also known as Greenwich Palace, the building was designed by esteemed architect Sir Christopher Wren and has seen life as both a royal hospital and a royal naval college. From Henry VIII's birthplace to Lord Nelson's lying in state, these walls contain a wealth of key historical moments. Our next destination, the Queen's House, was designed in the 17th century as a royal house of delights and today it is an elegant art gallery, an architectural masterpiece. Designed by the pioneering architect Inigo Jones, the 400-year-old Queen's House is Britain's first and finest classical building and a masterpiece of 17th century architecture. The Great Hall with its original black and white marble flooring and high ceiling with gold leaf installation underscore the importance of events held here. The sweeping tulip stairs are one of the original features of the Queen's House. This ornate, wrought iron structure was the first geometric self-supporting spiral stair in Britain.
The opulent ceiling and the portrait of Elizabeth I are some of the main attractions in the Queen's presence chamber. Our next destination is the Greenwich Riverfront, and it's pretty difficult to miss the exhibition of the restored clipper Cutty Sock, the last remaining tea clipper, and in her day, one of the fastest ships in the world. Did you know that deep under the Thames lies a public pathway between the north and south side of the river? Even though over 4,000 people use this tunnel every day, not many people know the history of the Greenwich Foot Tunnel. When it opened in 1902, it was one of the city's most impressive engineering achievements, burrowing under the Thames with 370 metres of straight tunnel. Originally lined with 200,000 white tiles, sections have been replaced by reinforced steel and concrete after the tunnel sustained bomb damage during the Second World War. You can use the foot tunnel to walk to Island Gardens on the north of the river for the famous Canaletto view and from this side you can see the old Royal Naval College on the riverfront framing the iconic Queen's House and the Royal Observatory behind them on top of the hill. A trip to Greenwich is not complete without a visit to the historic Greenwich market. Surrounded by independent shops, bars and cafes, this covered market has something for everyone, from handmade gifts, arts and crafts, to homewares and accessories. Our final destination today is the cloud cable car that takes you from the Greenwich Peninsula to the Royal Docks. You can either catch the cable car from North Greenwich or board on the Royal Victoria side of the river. At just under 300 feet, the cable car is the highest observation point over the Thames, spanning just over one kilometre across the river. Cabins arrive every 30 seconds and a single crossing usually takes less than 10 minutes. You can buy tickets online or at the venue. We'll put all the information in the description box. We covered quite a number of attractions in Greenwich in this video. If you are planning a visit, it is highly recommended that you arrive early because most of these places get busy with tourists later in the day, especially during the summer. If you have visited any of these places, please let us know in the comments section. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. That's it for today and thanks very much for joining us. Until next time, goodbye.